Hello, welcome everyone to this fortnightly um, session where I invite you, the people, to speak out. So just to say, <clears throat> I never know who is going to come on these calls. I select people pretty much at random. If you want to speak, then raise your hand, which is the icon, and I will know to come to you. Um, I'm just going to, before I get into, into going around the group and seeing who wants to speak, and, uh, and you're welcome to share your views on what's unfolding, what's happening in your personal life, um, and input on anything I'm going to say in the opening here. So uh, it's, it's down to you, and I never know who's going to come on, and I never know what you're going to say. So... <laughs> <laughs> but to start off with, I'm going to just mention two things, um, a little announcements here. So let me just come to this. First of all, I'm going to share my screen and hold on, where are we going? Yeah, so the first thing, this Saturday, August 21st at 3.35pm, I'm going to be speaking at the Born Free Festival in Leek in Staffordshire, which is being organized by Deanne G, who I notice is on the call. So <clears throat> if you're in the Leak area, then maybe come along and support uh, that group. And I'm gonna be talking for about, I don't know, 30 minutes about what's unfolding. Um, the other thing <clears throat> which I would love you, if you're around on Sunday, um, let me see if I can get this on the screen. I'm actually creating, I've just moved back to Bakewell and I'm creating a new stand in the park in Bakewell. I'm hoping you can see this. Um, it's actually at the Bath Gardens in Bakewell, which is not the main park. It's the smaller a flower filled park near the Rutland Arms Hotel, near the main roundabout in Bakewell, which is a lot busier. And um, that's happening from on Sunday at 10 a.m. So I'm gonna do that every Sunday at 10 a.m. and I'm gonna be wearing yellow. <laughs> so <laughs> I've, um, yeah, I've, I've uh, got some yellow added to my wardrobe to wear for, for Sunday. So because it's the first week, it would be really great to support me because otherwise I don't wanna be standing there on my own some lonesome. <laughs> Um, so if you are around in Bakewell or you can make the journey for 10 a.m. on Sunday, 22nd August, just to get the ball rolling. So um, looking forward to seeing you there. There's the little map. There's the Rutland Arms Hotel, if you know Bakewell. There's the main roundabout in the centre of town. And I'm going to be standing underneath the flagpole, which is right at the entrance to the park. And there will be a couple of stand yellow flags, stand in the park flags that I've ordered. Okay, so those are the announcements. Uh, let's go back to the screens. Um, I, the one thing I just want to preface today, and then we'll open it to the group. And so please do um, raise your hand in terms of the icon if you want to speak. And I'll come to those of you who've got your hand raised in priority. Um, actually, let's just come across the screens. Give us a wave. Let's see who's on here today. So lots of familiar faces. Thanks to everyone who's joined. Lots of avatars there. We've currently got 60 participants on. Uh, so that is, uh, that's wonderful to see you all. The one thing I just wanted to preface this call with, and then I'll open it to your comments. Um, I don't, watch mainstream media, TV, uh, or listen very much, but I did happen to catch quite a few bulletins on BBC Two yesterday on my Sunday listening to Elaine Page and Johnny Walker Sounds of the 70s. And um, it's very interesting to notice, isn't it, how the shift of mainstream media news coverage has moved from COVID jab, COVID jab, COVID jab, onto Afghanistan. Now, looking at some of the images which have come out of that, and I, again, I haven't really been watching much of it, but just seeing what's coming up into my timeline, isn't it interesting how similar the imagery which is being presented is, uh, how similar it is to what happened in the Capitol back in January in the United States with these kind of 
um, uh, these um, these uh, rebels, shall we call them rebels, suddenly being in the government buildings, broadcasting from the government buildings, having photographs taken in the government buildings, very similar imagery to what happened in the Capitol in America in January 2021. 20, and my sense about this is, is that the plan is moving to the next stage and they know that we've already seen with a lot of the protests they're starting to get quite militant and quite strong all over the world whether you look at what's happening in australia france is is revolting uh, and a lot of the uprisings in the uk are quite military now with with you know people in berets um so, so it's the, the, the flavor has shifted and my sense is what they're trying to embed in the, in the subconscious minds of the masses is that better the devil you know, better to keep to the system you know that will keep you safe than have the rebels take over because if the rebels take over then chaos is going to prevail. And so it's really interesting that this is what is being seeded because of course, as things move to the next stage of the global hostile takeover bid, and they start to, it starts to come in even this autumn, winter lockdown, you know, potentially communication breakdown, potentially uh, food supplies cut off. And it has the possibility that things could turn quite strong that, um, they're going to want to create the conditions which allow them to push through extra martial laws to prevent uprisings. That's my sense of what is happening. And that is um, my sense of what is being seeded and planted right now. And my intention here is not to create fear. It's about the conscious awareness of kind of reading into how this is being communicated and, and what's playing out here interesting to see right below me there's this red rectangle on my screen who's that John oh dear things are kind of things are turning red so that's that feels quite symbolic but uh, to me this is a warning because you know we've been given our little reprieve of the summer our little few weeks of of uh, freedom and you can bet anything come September October boom it's going to come they're going to come down hard on us for the next wave uh, anyway so that's my two penneth just to get the ball rolling so let's come to uh to see who's on the call and let's come first to candy's temple who's the first person with her yellow hand up on the screens so candy's come on share with us hi what's everybody. going on in your world hi hello Hi everybody. Um, I, I wanted to talk. I want to talk about a couple of things. Um, what, and thank you so much. This is the first time I've actually been on your Zoom at the time it happens. I always listen to the recordings, which I think are great. Thank you. Anyway, um, what I want to talk about first of all is Keir Starmer, the leader of the opposition. Something people may not know about him. People probably do know that he was the man who um, refused to prosecute Jimmy Savile. And um, I think when he was director of public uh, prosecutions um, in, in the last century, or maybe not as long ago as that. But what people may not know about him is that he is the only MP ever to have been invited on to something called the Trilateral Commission a kind of, I'd say, a shady organization started by David Rockefeller in 1973. Um, just to put it um, succinctly, the people, governments, and economies of, of all nations must serve the needs of multinatural, uh, I can't read my, multinatural, corporate corporations, basically, banks and corporations. So basically, the only MP ever to have been invited onto this. Um, we know this, these are the stated aims. They follow the, um, also I believe, they also want to follow the aims of the World Economic Forum by any means possible. So this is the man who, as we know, always argues for 
tougher lockdowns than Boris. And this is why, this is his guiding force. He's a very, very dangerous man. And unfortunately, as we know, politics isn't the answer, but he, he is the leader of the opposition and very dangerous. So I wanted to say that. The other thing um, I just wanted to ask, ask you guys and ask you, Rachel, do you think there is any point in trying to talk to smaller businesses, smaller chains, for instance, like maybe Coat Restaurant, the Ivy, whether there's any chance that the leaders of, of these businesses would, would be willing in, in any way to look at really what's going on if they don't know and, and make a stand. I mean, if I write to them, I'm nobody, they don't know, you know, they don't know who I am, where I come from. But I'm just wondering if people think that there is, um, there is any point at all in contacting uh, these corporations, these, these businesses. And um, I don't want to take too much time. Um, just to say, um, I will post a link, something about the Trilateral Commission on the chat. And, you know, just like to know what, what, what you think about all that. Okay, Candice, thank you. Thanks for coming on and opening that little can of worms. Um, so just to say, I'm gonna mute you back there. Um, so just to say, first of all, there is no opposition and it's quite obvious Keir Starmer ha is one of the cabal, <laughs> is, is bankrolled by them. Um, the other thing about the businesses standing up, I think there are lots of businesses standing up. There are, are lots of independent businesses now uh, who don't require any of the masks, any of, any of the bullshit, basically. And... There are websites, and I can't remember the exact name, but um, uh, anyway, I've, I've seen lots of websites with listings of pubs and restaurants and independent businesses which are uh, not requiring, not, not part of the, the system. So my feeling is, and I've, I've been an advocate for this, and I know that it's happening all over the UK and the world, small community groups are gathering little pockets of people and they're all linking together and they're all of the businesses that they run that are independent you know so there is a possibility uh, we don't have to rely on big corporates anymore that's what we need to do is to create a whole network of um of smaller businesses hold on candy candy so i'm gonna have to there you go let's get, let you go back on if you want to reply you need to unmute. Thank you, that's that's brilliant, thank you. And what I also meant to say is that I'm in kind of Northwest London and it seems to me that all of you guys are mostly in the country. So anybody, um, I have started a Freedom Hub for my area. So if anybody's interested, um, we're kind of NW6, um, NW3, whatever, please just get in touch with me. I meant to say that, that's all. Yeah. Thank so, and thanks for your comments, that's really interesting, thank you yeah okay <laughs> okay candy so yes we have to this is the way that we're going to we need to create a net that is going to catch everything that's my sense so if there are and and if you just look at the numbers of people who've been had the the jab you know there's at least 30 40 percent who haven't been dj'd yet so there's a mass of people who aren't buying into the program and so all we need to do is the is to um, all of the awakened people to come together in solidarity, create that network of local community groups that can catch and create an alternative solution to the one that the big corporates are trying to bulldoze through. And it's gonna, you know, in the short term, okay, don't get on a big plane, don't, don't travel, don't go to any of the big corporates in the short term. Let's just find those independent people and create solidarity through an alternative economy. That's what's happening. Okay, let's come to some more people. Let's come to Karen Miknas now. I'm gonna try and come to new people if I can. So Karen, would you like to come on? Hello, Rachel. Hi, thank you for um, bringing me on. It's the first time I've been to one of your uh, Zoom calls. So thank you for that. And I just wanted to share something that happened to me over the weekend, just to um, hopefully give people um, just a little insight. I, I had a bad fall when I was out in London on, on Friday night and I really badly hurt my shoulder and I ended up in A&E and I just 
I, when I was queuing for A&E, I was quite worried about what I would be asked to do, whether I'd be asked to have a test. Uh, I've never, I've never had a test. I've never worn a mask. And so it, it I, I was quite worried because I obviously needed to see somebody, but um, wasn't quite sure what to expect. I live in Brighton, so I ended up in Sussex Hospital. Um, and I'm pleased to say they weren't asking people to have any tests. They were asked me to wear a mask. I politely declined um, and I got no, no hassle after that for it. So I just wanted to share that with people that, I, you know, you can say no. And there were a lot of people in most of the people in the waiting a &E were wearing masks, but I wasn't it wasn't enforced. I wasn't given any any problems um, while I was there. That's for the really five and a half know. five and a half hours that I had to wait to be seen, but um, I yes, I just wanted to let people know that um, I didn't I didn't have any issues really, so it was quite good, and I just wanted to share that. Oh, that's really good to know, Karen. Really good to know that uh, it's uh, there's an an easing. Also, on the other side of it, it's also very interesting to notice how many people are continuing with all of the staff. I mean, even this morning, um, I've got a guy window cleaning at my the house I've left and it's completely empty and just doing the last touches to, to hand it back over so he was cleaning and he he, he had a mask on and I said you, you don't need to wear that you know like in the middle of the country empty house in the middle of nowhere and I was just out to walk the dog and he said no 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 we that's part of what we like to do and I just it just seemed insanity to me that this program is so strong that people would even wear a mask in an empty house in the middle of nowhere uh, for, for some reason of safety. It, it's really weird how strong this mind programming is. I was, I was the only one in, a, yes, interesting. in waiting without a mask. I was the only one. Everybody else had a mask on. So. Yeah, yeah. Interesting how strong that programming runs. Okay, well, thank you for coming on. Okay, let's come um let's come now to the i'm going to come to new people so deborah i know you've been on a lot pete you've been on a lot uh let's come to the guy who is a telephone number 832 looks like a telephone number who's sitting in front of a bookcase can you unmute yourself Come in 832-6706-1829. Can you come on? Can you unmute yourself? Unmute myself. One oh, second. there you go. Hi. Yes. Hello. Hi. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. What's your name? Hello. My name is Robert. Um, I'm calling from Hong Kong. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I've been here for about 15 years. Very, very happy living here. Um, but I'd like to move back to England, obviously live in a house that's got more land than an apartment in Hong Kong. Um, I'd like to link up with like-minded people. The areas I've got in mind are Bury St Edmunds, um, possibly Harrogate, but I think I prefer down south, Bury St Edmunds, Tunbridge Wells, Bath, Brighton, uh, maybe over to Bristol. So if anybody would, I could make contact with anyone in those areas, I'd be very grateful. Um, shall I just give you my email address? Is that okay to do that? Well, maybe put it in the chat. Sorry, what was your name again? Robert. Robert, sorry, Robert. Yeah. Um, maybe put your email address in the chat, uh, on the chat, because uh, everyone who's subscribed to these calls, and there's, it's crazy because there's like two and a half thousand people subscribed to these calls, and how many have we got on 70 people? <laughs> But, it, but okay. the, chat, the chat log does go out to the entire database. So put it in the chat. But the, the thing about this is, uh, Robert, that these, for example, the stand in the parks, I mean, I was in Lincoln uh, the week before last and just found the local stand in the park Lincoln and went and met a whole load of people in Lincoln, just completely off the bat. So where, whichever city you go to, there's bound to be people that you can link up with so it's like and and the stand in the parks are a great place a great starting point for those kind of local uh i won't even call them activists just people who have a different view i think that's when you get there i'd like to meet people before i actually get on the aeroplane 
and land because I literally most of the people I know in Yorkshire have all given in to the to the hype um so I, I want I'd like to meet up with like-minded people before yes. I leave Hong Kong um, okay yeah so I'd, I'm, I'm just going to give my email I'm not great with 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 them so my first time I ever use zoom um, my email is no noise 2020 at yahoo.com so if anybody plays this back they can pick it up from that um, oh, all right. point, um, I'm actually a barrister and I'd, um, I was on the same course as Keir Starmer for the human rights course over 20 years ago um, because it was a compulsory training course for all barristers in England and Wales um, and when they brought that act in I, I said this is the destruction of human rights because what it did, it created two parts for every human right. One that gave you the human right, and the second part that took it away on the grounds of national security and wait for it, public health. Uh, now, Starmer was very defensive of that, and he takes the position that the government can do whatever it wants to do when necessary. And I'm very, very opposed to that, I was very opposed to Starmer at the time. He's now still a practicing barrister, even though he's leader of the opposition, at Doughty Street Chambers in London. And that's the specialist human rights set. So I, I, I don't trust a lot of the human rights barristers at all, and, and very few barristers. I've got over 50 QCs that I work with that I bring to Hong Kong. Um, they've all signed up to the agenda. Um, over 16 of them are deputy high court judges, and they've all signed up to the agenda as well. So I don't think the law is going to offer many solutions to any of our questions and, and problems at all. Um, yeah. That's what I've discovered from working with them and being around them for over 20 years. So I think, you know, the law is definitely a dead end. And we've got to become, as you say, more practical um, and becoming more self-sufficient. Um, one part of that I think we need to get a group of is dentists and doctors who don't require testing and, um, and, and vaccination. Because it seems to me that more and more dentists and doctors are actually requiring people to at least have a test and some want in vaccination. So if we could somehow get a list of friends yeah. with dentists and doctors, because if a tooth suddenly goes, boy, you're in trouble. <laughs> you know, yeah, you, yeah, you're yeah. in real trouble. Um, and, and you don't have time to think about it. So I think the more practical we can get, the better. Yeah, I must admit that the, the databases that I've seen, the websites that I've seen of the alternative businesses and practices and, and therapists and that kind of thing, they are quite fragmented and piecemeal and it, it does and I haven't seen one all encompassing site that covers comprehensively covers every different sector and makes it really easy to search so whether yeah. you need to find a local pub or restaurant or whether you need to find a local doctor dentist that is outside of the system but I'm sure someone is working on it somewhere and and possibly someone even knows of something so again put that in the chat log or come on the call uh, Robert, before you go, and I know you've had a lot of time, but it is an interesting thing. Um, I'd love to know what is it like in Hong Kong? Because obviously we're hearing that a lot of uh, people are escaping back to the UK and that there is it's quite oppressive with China, Chinese kind of rule. And obviously we are concerned. A lot of people are concerned that what is going on is going to lead to a Chinese style state oppressive system here in the west oh gosh um that's a really really big question i'm hopefully going to be on rich allen when he gets back from his holiday and that's something we're going to talk about in great detail um but what i would say is that another thing i've been doing i've actually been one of the legal advisors to the pro Beijing communist party in hong kong that's a bit it sounds like a, a crazy thing um and I'm going to talk about that with Rich Callan as well. I'm no longer doing that, but I did that for a decade when, when, as a practicing barrister. Um, I would say that in 2019, there were 356 flu deaths, but in 2020, there were only 148 COVID deaths. Um, when we had protests in Hong Kong, there were two options open to the Chinese authorities. One, bring in the army. Two, let's create a disease real or imagined. Um, I think you can probably guess what um, option they chose. And this is where we are right now. My bigger fear is that the United Nations, WF and other countries will eventually blame China for this. And this could lead to an all out war. And I think that's a very, very scary thing that may well happen because initially the United Nations supported China quite, quite a lot in the way they handled the, the, way they handled the virus. 
Um, but if you look at it now, they seem to be turning against China and saying, we need to look a bit deeper into the Wuhan lab and et cetera, et cetera. And I think this could lead to some very nasty conflict um, occurring between other countries and China. And that's a very scary, scary thought. Yeah, absolutely. Although it has to be said that in terms of the World Economic Forum and Klaus Schwab, he, he was very keen to present Xi Jinping uh, to the World Economic Forum as one of the key sort of partners of the World Economic Forum. So for, uh, so far as the kind of corporate global hostile takeover bid, I would say that definitely China is involved and look how much money China's making out of COVID. Look, look at all those NHS test and trace kits oh, yeah. that they keep giving my children I've got stacks of them at home and these crazy all made in China all the masks made in China I mean there's you know and I'm sure all of the surveillance equipment is being made in China too um, yeah I, I think um the World Economic Forum wants the Chinese model but they don't want China running the model and yeah. I think they want to sell that China model to the rest of the world yes and then destroy China I think that's the bigger game. I think okay. that's, a, that's a very, very scary, scary thing. But I would say I'm very sure that COVID-19 is not a problem. I'm quite certain of that, given what I've been doing in the past. I'm very, very certain about that. So I just cannot believe how gullible the British people have been in, in falling for this. I'm absolutely yeah. stunned and amazed. Because if you just look at the raw numbers, in Hong Kong, 148 COVID deaths for a whole full year, 12 months, compared on a typical flu season where you get between 250 and 350 people. It just doesn't add up. Hong yeah. Kong's border of China, direct train to Wuhan, very crowded city, um, very few restrictions actually. There's been no real lockdown here at all. Um, and yet there's very, very, very few deaths associated with COVID. It's just absolutely not a problem. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, Robert, thanks for coming on. Thanks, Rachel, nice and thanks you. for hosting this. Great, thank you. Yeah, and hope it all goes well with your move to the UK, your repatriation. Yeah, please, somebody send me, just email me if you can. If you play this back, you'll get that email, no noise2020 at yahoo.com. Thank yeah. you. Thanks, Rachel. Thank you. Okay. Yes, I'm very upset that Bakewell is not on your list of, of potential cities there, Robert. Anyway, let's come to Sadiq. <laughs> <laughs> Bakewell is not not the top of the list of de desirable destinations. <laughs> okay, Robert's trying to have his retort there, but he's he's muted now. <laughs> okay, Sadika, let's come to you. Hi, Rachel. Hi, thanks for uh, having me on. Yeah, um, really good to be here and hear everybody. Um, yeah, I just wanted to share. I've been um, working with a, a shaman um, for the last 10, 12 years. And um, this weekend he did a couple of Zoom calls that were really powerful. Um, and I just felt that this is, is so appropriate information and sort of teachings to kind of share with those of us, you know, <laughs> activists or who, who, you know, see things in this, in this way. Um, and he, he works a lot with the shadow um, and he's talking about um, working with uh, other beings and entities and how to looking at kind of previous civilization civilizations that have um, also been uh, destroyed uh, whether it's Atlantis or Babylon and things and about working with higher beings and how how um, how that's really important and also I know that sounds a bit out there a bit woo woo <laughs> but um, on a on a kind of a more practical level in terms of like personal development looking at the shadow and how what what we're seeing playing out now is is really the the you know the global shadow, um, and how um, if if we actually work on it, and and that is only as a result of of our unexpressed shadow, our own individual unexpressed unintegrated shadow. So that if you know one thing that we can do to kind of help us all, help us individually and collectively raise our consciousness and our vibration is to work on our own shadow. Um, and it was just some, he, he puts out a lot of, you know, obviously some paid courses and, and empowerments and things, but a lot of free resources. He writes some really great blog posts and has free things as well and monthly Q&As, which are free. So I, I put together a little um, 
um, sort of information sheet with some links and things. So I just basically, I, I put it on a Google Doc. So I just basically was going to just kind of share the link in the chat. Who um, is the shaman, Sadiqa? His, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. His name is Peter Aziz. And he used to, he used to be in, in Glastonbury and then in Devon, um, but now he's in, in Thailand. Okay. Um, and so he does a lot of really good stuff. So, um, you know, it won't appeal to everybody, but for those that kind of vibe with it, it's, it's really, really good stuff. And I've, I've been working with him for like 12 years and found him brilliant. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. He does, he speaks incredibly fast. So you have to really <laughs> kind of be, be on it, but he's, he's very good, really good stuff. Yeah, cool. so I just, I just wanted to share that. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Sadiqa. Yeah, I mean, that this is a really interesting. Thank you for raising it like a um, an octave there, the conversation, because this, um, you know, we can talk about the 3D aspects, but there are the kind of higher dimension 5D aspects of unity consciousness and, and the evolution of humanity. And I totally agree that what we are actually being called to to transmute here is the persecutor victim rescuer drama triangle and so many people who've experienced that in their childhood they've maybe had very oppressive childhoods where they haven't been able to speak out where they have they've been powerless in the face of overwhelming external authority mm -hmm. whether that's a parent or bullies at school but as our adult selves we are now finding that that voice we're finding that strong no and that ability to speak out whereas maybe when we were young our throat shackle was frozen so mm -hmm. I do feel that this is an, an opportunity a massive opportunity for healing and a lot of our work is being able to just stand really strong in that eye of the storm no matter what's happening on the outside and to be able to hold that light and to hold that strong no I do not consent and not to fall into the fight flight freeze response Yes, exactly. And and his work, I mean, he does a lot of, of really great stuff on manifestation and things that, that is kind of not your normal kind of power of law of attraction stuff. Yes. It's, it's, it's much deeper. And just talking about the shadow as being that which basically holds everything that we, we push away from ourselves and we deny. Yes. And actually, if you look at the shadow, it's our greatest you know resource our greatest treasure that if we can integrate it then we get an incredible power from it yeah and I just feel that we're, we're up against such huge <laughs> um threat at the moment that we we need to kind of employ every magical <laughs> or or it, or conscious you know tool that we possibly can and he just happens to you know put them across very well so yeah I just wanted to share that as a resource yeah. I, I absolutely agree. And one thing I would say about these small local community groups, these little groups that are gathering, because it doesn't have to be millions of people marching on London, it can just be lots of little seeds, a little groups of people. And all of the ones that I go to, we always have an alignment, we always have a meditation, we always have a calling in of a higher power. And so it's like these little, little kind of drops all over the planet of, of people holding the light and this grid of light that is being activated i feel i feel it's very powerful and there is a, a psych psychological program it's it's got to be big to be effective like there aren't enough people in this group it's bullshit actually a small group of highly aligned people um just in stand gathering in circle and dropping an intention is like a it's like a dropping a little pebble in a very still lake it has yes. massive energetic power yeah and just um just reminds me that i don't know if you're aware of david hawkins work um yes. of consciousness because that he's also saying that you know one person calibrating at 400 or something is yes. equivalent to you know, ten thousand or a hundred thousand people calibrating in in fear or something. So yeah. So so the the whole consciousness thing is is so important. I mean, I've been an activist for the last two couple of years, really going for it, going for it. But it's it burns you out, and unless you have this this other side, <laughs> you know, and, and looking at the the universe as being overall a friendly thing, and that this whole thing is is to evolve our consciousness, then I you know I find it. It can easily take me down unless I can yeah, remind yeah. myself of this. Yeah. And yeah, and I, I do want to just just uh, stop in um, just to explore that slightly, because obviously when we drop from obviously the highest, there is a thousand, which is sort of enlightenment right down to naught, which is kind of death. But if we do drop into those lower vibrations of anger, fear, um, 
the the quickest solution is to completely surrender into them and fully feel them it's like wow thank you thank you for showing me all my fear thank you for showing me all my anger let me fully feel that and just moving it into that gratitude and releasing resistance to it as opposed to trying to get rid of it fully feeling it like thank you for showing me this Mm -hmm. piece of trauma that I haven't yet resolved let me just work with that let me just breathe into that let me just fully feel that like what is triggered what is on the outside that has triggered me into this state and just to explore that is a very good technique to alchemize and transmute it go and and actually fully feel it because fully feeling is fully healing and then we can just through that releasing of resistance it's much easier to get up the scale again yeah yeah Peter is trying to push it away absolutely Peter Aziz actually does a whole um load of training on on that um yeah about absolutely going and feeling everything and it, it's he, he includes a technique called body electronics yes and uh, a very powerful healing technique and and it's like you, you know it's 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 mad it's like a sustained shiatsu where you're giving sessions for like two or three hours and two two or three people working on one person and it's and it says you know experience um encourage and welcome everything with enthusiasm yes enthusiasm means the god in you and it's like so that enthusiasm is such a high vibration that you you know even if it's apathy or hatred or guilt whatever it is welcome it and feel it fully enthusiastically until it until it just dissolves by itself yeah very, very high yeah yeah fantastic yes yeah. no absolutely that's the root of all trauma healing that somatic experiencing the feeling it in the body in the energetic grid so that we can transmute it yeah so thank you for coming on yes, and sharing thank you. that Siddhika. Yeah. yeah thank you very cool much. okay so that's great now who would like to come on next peter of the awakened patiently waiting there i'm conscious Hello. time slipping away gosh it's like flown by so far today Hi, Peter. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. I'd just like to, uh, uh, well, Candy started off with saying that she was surprised about uh, Keir Starmer. But the thing is that the Freemasonic Cabal, which runs this system, part of the Committee of 300 and the Trilateral Commission, are now putting the chess pieces in the right spot. They are putting them all across the world, like Z of China. He is part of this as well. Biden, part of it, runs through the deep state. That controls Biden because he's a puppet. They are putting them in Australia, in Ardan, in in New Zealand. And New Zealand quickly came and succumbed. And she said we were an island, and that's why. New Zealand are now virtually a zombified nation. They have done everything that she has said. Uh, and, And now she's saying we're going to be locked down until 2022. That means they are, nobody's going to come into the country. That kind of lockdown is what New Zealand are going for. Nobody's coming in, nobody's going out, apart from if you're a politician, of course, or, a, or, or top business. That has been on today. That is definite today. That is what she has just said. Wow. Okay. So that's New Zealand. Bless them. I've been to New Zealand in 1996. What a great, resilient people they are. Beautiful. But I fear for them now. And uh, it's, the, it's now the time for the rise of the Maoris again. They have to come to their... This is their time. Like, we are here for our time. We are here for all that. Now, going now back to what Robert said, I think it is in Hong Kong, uh, that the virus, COVID, is quite correct. It is not a virus. The virus is government propaganda which is running now, and again, another government prop, all government propagandas, westernized nations, and I'm going to bring in the Philippines in this one because Durati is now putting another big lockdown on until the 20th of August. I have peep, peep contacts in, in the Philippines. Durati is taking the bribe, which is the Western money, and that is because they need it. And, and, and any nation of weak nations that take the money, as you've known in Africa, where nations have taken the money, uh, people have given them 10 million, and 3 million goes to the nation, and 7 million goes to building a new palace. And that's what the presidents used to do, the corruptness of African presidents. We've got the problem there, and it's still, it is up to we are the people to yes. sort this out. This is definitely there. Now, <laughs> I don't want to spout off about myself because I won't, but I was surprised what someone said about the shaman. I have, I have a good shaman friend in, Lan- in Lancashire who I never met in person 
and I spoke to him on the phone, and he just told me to, I've got something to tell you. You are an ex-king of England. That's just surprised me. And I said, what? He said, I'm telling you now, you are an ex-king of England. And I said, who was he? He said, put it this way, he had a few wives. <laughs> I thought, well, thank you very much. And um, he said, go away and look at your similarities. And yeah, he's quite right on that one. So I'm going to put that one to the side. But all your past experiences, if people believe in re reincarnation, is something which I wanted to say last time before I, I, I was, you had that time at one o'clock. Your reincarnation past experiences are coming now to the floor. This is where they are coming back. Our previous lives are coming in to help us. Um, I, for instance, have the, uh, have a very, I'm a peaceful man. I love peace. I love, I love to love it. I think everybody along the world should love each other and should respect each other and help each other where possible and help our animals too, because they need our love. And I mean, the wildlife, etc. And what I also want to say in this one, last is point, I, Peter, Thank you, pardon? last point. The point is my Knights template is coming to help me now when I need that fight. The wisdom of the king is here. I know about, I was, I was a doctor in past life. I know all about, I've been against Big Pharma for ages. And the one thing that has suppressed me to tell me as a child to shut up was religion. The Christian religion, which was created by the Western Catholic Church, which is the Satanic Vatican, has suppressed people for centuries. We do not need it. We need each other more than religion itself. Okay, Peter. Thank you. Well, that is a whole can of worms that I could easily spend some time unraveling there, <laughs> given that Henry VIII uh, and the Reformation and turning all the monasteries into public schools was the root of the patriarchal system. So on, on that vein, I guess we have you to blame, Peter, for yeah. everything that's yeah. unfolded. Possibly oh, right. my goodness. OK, well, let's not go there because I'm just concerned of getting as many people on. Thanks for joining the call, Peter, and thanks for sharing. Uh, let's come to I'm going to come to people who haven't spoken before. So which is a couple uh, in orange and blue. Yes. Hello. Hi. Hello. Um, yeah, sorry, that's spelt wrong and I haven't been able to change it. Sue, I'm Sue and this is Sue. Chris. We're Chris. in Bath. So I just want to say to Robert, if he wants to come to Bath, have a cup of tea, there, we'll meet cool. him there, yeah. And also, Rachel, most importantly, I want to say thank you so much. I used to live in the Peak District, watched your videos from the, from the beginning, and it was just a lovely connection to um, have that back up to the Peak, Peak District and, um, and you. That's all I wanted to say for now. And we've just joined, yeah, so. Oh, cool. You. Oh, thank that's you. nice. Nice to see you. Bless you. And, and I'll just say, Rachel, I'm Chris, and I have great respect for what you've done because you, you really lifted our spirits last year, about last August, last, sem last September, when you saw seeing your video. You've know, you got the courage to stand out and speak to the people. They're brilliant. Yeah. And I'll just say, uh, I had the same experience as a lady from Brighton who has to go to the A&E recently. I, it also happened to me, but I cut my hand, and that, you know we've never worn a mask, and I was expecting all sorts of things, but I went in, no problems whatsoever, no wearing masks. Um, and it was a surreal experience actually because I was petrified of going. I had to have stitches in my hand. But I was petrified of going because of what they may make me do stick up my nose or stick in my arm, etc. I come home and it was a real surreal experience because it wasn't happening. So you know, it's, it's just very far. I had the same experience. This kind of thing isn't happening. I was more frightened of going to the hospital for what they may do to me than you know what was wrong with me, kind <laughs> of thing. And it didn't turn out that way. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's yeah. good. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you, Sue. Thank you, Chris. Thanks for okay. coming on. And also, Rach, if you come for a to Bath as well, buy you a cup of tea as well. <laughs> oh, lovely. I'll leave my email. Thanks very much. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Oh, nice, nice to see you there. Okay, next, let's come to Lindsay Young next, who's patiently waiting with her hand up. Lindsay, hi. Hi. Well, it's uh, a double edge because I'm nervous to speak. I haven't spoken before, but I wanted to tell you about something that happened to me. Can you hear me? Yes, I can, Lindsay. And just to say, Patrick, I'll come to, come to you next. OK. Um, I live in a, a small town village, Bentham, 
in the middle of the, the countryside. It's on the border of North Yorkshire and Lancashire, very remote. Um, in order to, because I, I've always joined choirs, I joined the local Bentham Choir, which is a Christian choir. Uh, we meet in the Methodist church until we couldn't anymore. Okay. Um, then during the first period of lockdown, a couple of them were phoning me, being you know very kind and how are how are you doing and so on, until they found out some of my Facebook posts um, were, were what they would call conspiratorial stuff. Um, anyway, I'll try and be a bit brief. Um, about a week and a half ago, uh, the choir leader phoned me like she had been doing. We had a chat and then she said, well, we're meeting again. We're starting up again in September, but I'm afraid you can't come. Um, people in the choir uh, don't want you to come because you're not you you don't agree with being vaccinated. Um, so um, that set up a process of me. I was depressed, um, felt annoyed at their ignorance, as we all do in this group. Um, uh, a few days later, I suddenly my mood changed um, and. The mood changed before the thought came, well, I can join another choir because I'm not actually a Christian. I'm, I'm a lifelong Buddhist. Um, and they had sort of been, you know, including me ecumenically. Um, but what, what, it, what it also, so I'm sort of all right, because I immediately have joined a, a nicer, better choir in a um, settle, uh, a town, my nearest town. Um, but what is going to be happening? What is about to be happening with all the choirs, the groups? Uh, I then looked into whether the churches were going to um, reject people. I contacted my, the Buddhist centre in London that I'm connected to, Lek Dan Ling uh, in East London, and they, they're not gonna stop unvaccinated people coming in. Um, and then I thought of all the businesses, the employers who are, all the groups, you know, what, what do people think? What is, you know, what have you been thinking about this is, is going to happen? The thing is, Lindsay, it is going to happen and it is happening. And we just need to focus on creating and finding the alternative solutions, finding them or creating them. So find your local stand in the park. And if you find there isn't a local stand in the park, then create one. Find your local choir, and if there isn't one that is up for unvaxxed people, then create one, as you've done. And we just have to find one another, find the other people who share your voice. And, you know, who knows what may come out of this, an even more powerful choir, which is, you know, I mean, even with our little group, we do sound the om, and, and we do little singing together in our little group we stand in circle and you know so it's really beautiful so you know we just it's we, I think we just have to accept there's a huge amount of people probably half I'd say it's half the people who are completely in the program and half of the people are questioning it because not everyone's had the second jab so people even if they've had the first jab they may be thinking oh my god I didn't like that and maybe people are right that I'm suffering so it could well be that there's it's a half and half situation. So we just need to link up with all the people that are like minded and forget about the rest, because everyone. I mean, I was asleep for a very long time and then I woke up to the system. Everyone is awake to a certain point and then everyone's asleep to a certain point and under the spell. And then suddenly one day you wake up and everyone's got their own moment that they wake up. So just because we've woken up doesn't mean to say that those people won't wake up next year or later this year, who knows? But once you've woken up, there's no going back to sleep. So it's like pop, people are popping like popcorn, but don't get angry about the popcorn that hasn't popped. Let's just collate with all of the popcorn that has popped and create solidarity 
in those groups. That's my best suggestion. Yeah, Lindsay. Can I just very briefly say, but what about the legal situation? What about hate crime? If, I, if they said you can't join us because you're Jewish or black or... So, so the thing is, Lindsay, and exactly as Robert said, and I've heard it said by Anna de Buissere, I think that's her name. She's another lawyer who's looking into all of this. The court, the justice system is fucked. You can't get a court hearing for months and months and months. If they try and take any of this to court, it's going to take a year, two years, who knows how long. So what Anna de Buissere was saying is this needs to be the, the court of the people. We need to take the information to the people. We need to just create awareness around what's going on and awareness, pattern interrupting, and then co-creating an alternative. Those to me are the three things that we all need to be doing because the, the justice system, even if it does get to court, and that might take a year, two years, even then you're probably up against a judge who's completely sold into the system, lock, stock and barrel, completely believing in it. You know, so the system is not going to bring itself down. The system is going to perpetuate itself to the death, right? So we can't rely on the system. That's why there's no point in, you know, politics, okay, unless we can somehow infiltrate the Houses of Parliament. We have to just use common law rights to create an alternative solution, which is just fuck the system. Let's just create an alternative which is peaceful, doing no harm in common law, supporting one another because we can't rely on the government to do it anymore. We can't rely on the big corporates to do it anymore. So we've just got to support one another as the people for the people and just create a complete alternative to what they're dishing up for us. That's the only solution in my mind. We have to create the system we want. That's what uh, Terry's just said that as well. So. So Lindsay, so, so take your energy and focus off the anger against these people and put all that energy, pour all that energy into creating a choir and free your voices for freedom and liberation and solidarity and chanting the Om and doing the Buddhist thing and Om Namah Shivaya or whatever you want to chant. You know, that's where we need to go with this. Forget the rest. They'll wake up soon enough, but we just need to solidarity group with the people who do believe, who do sing from the same hymn sheet, literally, as you. Okay? Thanks for coming on. Okay, Patrick, patiently waiting. Let's come to you. Can you unmute, Patrick? Am I unmuted now? Yes, hi. Oh, hi. I'm living in Ireland, in the west of Ireland, so I'm kind of... Um, I've seen, I haven't been on a call before, but I very much admire what you're doing and I like your, your videos and everything. But one thing I wanted to mention, this is just living in Ireland. I like watching football, right? And like at the weekend, the Premier League started in, in your country, in England. And it was amazing. Like you had crowds of 50,000 or even more, I think at Manchester, and they're all singing and waving and, and no masks. And like, it's, it's an absolute spectacle of showing what, what an unreal thing this whole COVID is. I mean, it's, it's, it's a dramatic difference. The, the league finished last year with no, nobody at the games, complete silence, auditoriums and so on. And I, I don't know, it's just, to me, it's like it sort of embodies the best of the British thing in a way. It's like, let's get on with it. Like at a certain point, you've got to forget this nonsense. It's like, they have like these huge crowds and me and my brother, we were joking about how the Irish attitude with the waving flags or the Irish attitude of the authorities would be, oh, the flag waving is going to move some viruses from me to you. And I mean, it's just so ridiculous. And it's like, anyway, I, it just seemed to be worth mentioning. Why can't this be used as an example for society in general? If it's safe to do this, it could be safe to do just about anything. I mean, here, they don't want you to sing in a bar. They don't want you to, to shout. Here, people are singing and shouting with no masks. How 50,000 of them in one place. Anyway, I, I think it's worth, I don't know, as an example, maybe, of saying, look, this, this is how unreal this whole operation is. And yeah. I mean, just it's all based on a mind control, nothing else. It's like you can literally forget about it. The thing is, Patrick, you can bet you can bet your bottom dollar next month. It's like numbers are climbing. Boris did the wrong thing. He shouldn't have right. let everyone out. 
He shouldn't have lifted right. those restrictions. Look at the mess we're in. We're going to have to lock down harder. We're going right. to have to jab more people. We're going to have to do this. You can see what's happening. And right. all the way through this, Boris has been the fall guy. If you notice, he's been the buffoon fall guy that other countries don't do what Boris did because right. uh, because he made a big mistake saying herd immunity at the beginning. Yeah. If only he'd locked down earlier, we wouldn't be in this mess, all that bullshit. Right. So you can see they're playing. It's the old corporate game, good yeah. cop, bad cop. Yeah. If you want to sell something, you create a good cop and a bad cop. And, and you, it's a game. It's a psychological game. So let's just really see through this because all of these countries are all in on it and they're all at one stage or other. They're, they are all pawns on the, or, or, you know, they're all players on the same chessboard playing into the same eventual outcome. So don't be deceived, right. I mean, Patrick. Actually, I take your point. I'm, I'm not sort of giving Boris credit for this. I just think as a matter of reality that people can be that close. They can do all this stuff. There is no consequences. Well, to of it, course, we point. all know that. And that's the point. Yeah. But, you know, Boris is just a sock puppet like Biden, like Jacinda Ardern, like Justin Trudeau, like Macron. They've all been put in place by the corporate. They've all been had big corporate money to get them in positions mm. of power. You notice as soon as Boris won the election, they pressed the button on this whole thing with the this thing in Wuhan almost immediately. So it was like the final piece in place. And then when they got rid of Trump and put Biden in, boom, another big chess piece was put into place. So, you know, this is we have to tune into the mind of the cabal here and, and how they're moving their political players. Right. And just one I want to say about Ireland, it's interesting, you know, we have had our history of famine and, and just a lot of um, Cruelty, of course, we blame the English. I, I don't, you know, I mean, but anyway, that, that's not the point. But it's like th th this whole operation, this COVID thing has tapped into the Irish subconscious. Like they, they just punish themselves. It's like they can't punish themselves enough. They deprive themselves. They deprive themselves some more. Yeah. And it just works on, on the psychology of the country. You know. Well, this, this is exactly what, uh, and I forget her name, was talking about with the shaman about this the collective shadow, the collective trauma, which is held and it's passed down generationally. So there right. is there is, uh, there is trauma within whole races of people, like the Jewish people, like the Irish people. Like in South America, there's a tremendous suspicion of anyone who's all of the conquistadors who came and brought the disease from, from Europe, you know, okay. to, to the native people. So you've got all of this generational um, collective trauma which is all playing out so this is this is all an expression of the shadow and it's but it's an opportunity for it to be cleared once and for all for mm -hmm. those who know what's going on and can start to pattern interrupt it and shine the light of conscious awareness onto it so there is hope patrick thank you for coming on i'm going to mute you back and um let's come let's end with Foxy. Sorry to everyone who hasn't managed to get on so far, but it's been Hi. quite quite a busy Hi. call. Thank you for letting me. I won't keep you on for long. Um, other than I've just loved all the inquiries today and the energy and just really what I need is quite five D conversation, hasn't it? Um, so my thing, I am single mother, businesswoman, live in Manchester, just a very close to the city centre and just really I'm hankering for a different type of life. I'm actually going this afternoon to view a, a property in Matlock. I've got a community there, um, but all not on my script at all. So I've got a community there of people who don't see the world how I see it. Um, whereas in Manchester, I do have quite a good network of people who see, see what we're seeing. And I suppose I'm just kind of just wanting some advice, really. What, you know, is it the better, that, is, coming back to, is it the better the devil you know? Or, you know, should, is it just something where I know that we're all coming together and building these communities? But, um, I mean, I've heard a few things about what's going on in Matlock and Darley Dale in particular. I know that there's a lady who owns a shop there who's, like, chasing people out of the shop without wearing masks and, you know, being a small village mentality. 
I'm just curious as to, not curious, I would just like someone's opinion and advice as to whether I'm trading one thing at the wrong time. What What's your motivation for leaving Manchester, Foxy? You just want to get out of the city? Sorry. Yeah, I want space, I want, to be able to, I want a garden, I want to grow things, I want a better quality of life for my daughter. It's very noisy and busy here, you know. Um, and I suppose it's always been an ambition. I'm lucky enough I can kind of fulfil it now. But I'm, I think I'm being quite timid because I do have a network of people who see the world as I do here in Manchester. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, for what it's worth, I do think it's a good move to, to step out of the city and get into the country. I, I think the cities are going to be the first places where they do the whole digital locking down and, and make it the whole AI facial recognition thing. So. The cities are going to be the first places to go. Just to say, um, we've got a local support group here in the Peak District, a lot of people from Matlock and the surrounding areas. I started it in Yulegrave, but it's much more, we changed the name from Yulegrave um, commu Local Community Support Group to Peak District. So if you're interested, then maybe you want to join us and meet some like-minded people and, you know, I would I would definitely move out of the city and you don't have to be restricted to that group of people. So there's there's lots of different stand in the parks. And obviously, if you if you're up to coming to mine on Sunday, that would be great at Bakewell at 10 a.m. And yeah, meet just get in touch with local people. So it doesn't have to be it's not an either or it's a both and more and more and more. And what I, what I'm noticing is people are part of many different groups uh, and and you know joining with lots of it doesn't just have to be one group in one uh, one location okay foxy so thanks for coming on and um let's just come back to the screens it's just past one o'clock so this is our alternative to the jeremy vine show this lunchtime chat <laughs> for those of you who saw my post about jeremy vine being infiltrated by the truth bomber last week um so isn't it nice that we've got a forum where free freedom of speech is allowed and um uh yeah so together we are creating alternative communication alternative media all these little pockets which are happening all over the world now so it's um it's all good so thank you all for joining let's just have a wave i'm going to go across the screens lots of love to you all thank you for coming on and sorry that I couldn't get to everyone. Great to see so many people on the call. And the next session will be in two weeks time, which I think is a bank holiday Monday, but I, I'm still gonna do it, which is the 30th of August, but I'm still gonna be here at 12 noon, for anyone who wants to join. So sending you lots of love, have a great day and bye for now. Bye-bye. <laughs>